What about the rewards now that it's done, this complete project? I think uh, it's it's one thing that is very important when you when when you build a house it means that you already own the land so I'm able to run my livestock farming on that same yard without interfering with other people's spaces so those are some of the rewards having enough space Good afternoon and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. Thank you to those who are tuning in for the first time. Welcome back to those who always tune in. That's every Wednesday at 8 p.m., the First Time Home Buyer Show. We have amazing guests who join the show. We talk about generational wealth, financial freedom, what it is to invest in property, and even just investments in general, and how we can sustain growing and building our legacy. This evening is no different. Mrs. Spish is with us this evening. Mrs. Spish is a little a little nervous. Ne. No, I'm no not you're not. Nervous. No, she's not no. now. Okay, no, that's fine. Mrs. Spish is with us this evening and we're talking about uh, Mrs. Spish is an author, an investor, even building her own property as we speak, which is amazing. Mrs. Spish, welcome to the show. Thank you, Esti. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I want to jump straight into it, Mrs. Spish. We want to talk about, you know, I just said we talk about generational wealth and financial freedom. And that means something different to everyone. That generational wealth that thing looks different to everyone what does it look like for you okay so generational wealth uh, means that even when i die one day i'll be able to pass whatever that i i had worked for while i was still alive mm. so with me um, i'm creating generational wealth through property through investing in the stock market through my livestock farm mm. and a lot of other mm. things. So it means that I'm able, even when I'm dead, I'm able to say that my children are, are still well taken care of. Exactly. Um, so I wanted to find out because a lot of people, you know, um, a lot of people, especially in my circles also, were choosing to buy land and then build. So what is that process? What has it been like for you? Okay, so for me, it was both exciting and challenging at the same time. Mm. Because when we were building, I was still in varsity. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, only, I, I got married in my second year of varsity. Mm. So in, in, in my third year, then we started building. So it meant that only my husband was working at that time. Right. So we didn't really have enough funds mm. to, to, fund, to fund the whole project. Right. So those were the challenges. But the excitement, the excitement was on another oh, level, mm. knowing that you're going to be owning a house at such a young age mm. and it, it it meant a lot for right. us yes and because you were lucky you had someone going through that process mm. with you right yes. and a lot of us are either doing it alone or we don't have much help um what was it like to have that what is the importance of having that support throughout that process for you i think it's very important for 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 you to be able to have a support system mm. because number one it's your first time building mm. so you don't know all the processes you don't know where you should go to get this and that so with us our our parents were there for us mm. they were able to support us i remember when we went to buy the land my mother-in-law accompanied us to go and buy that land mm. we inspected the land then we bought the land so it's very important for, for, for you to have a backup system mm. or to have a support, support. yes. Mm. You spoke about the challenges, right? That mm. it was difficult, you know, with regards to finance. Finances. And because, you know, that's inevitable with a lot of us that happens, it comes in the way. What about the rewards now that it's done, this complete project? The rewards are rewarding, <laughs> if I can put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Because now we have our own land, number mm. one. Because I think uh, it's it's one thing that is very important when you when when you build a house, it means that you already own the land. Exactly. So I'm able to run my livestock farming on that, on that same land. yard without interfering with other people's spaces. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the rewards: having enough space, having uh, having a cute garden, and yeah. doing and just having something that you that's yours. Yes, you know, yes. that's also very nice. You when you started your process, was there a main goal for you? 
the main goal was having land. Mm. We know that it's very difficult uh, to, to, to find land. Yeah. Now, the main goal was that if, if we can have this property, we're going to be able to own the land. Exactly. If we want to venture into other businesses such as farming, we already own the land. Mm. So we won't, we, we won't have to like pay other people to, to do things for mm. us. We mm. are able to do things in our own yard. Exactly. You spoke about financial difficulties that come across mm. the way right and i think for a lot of first time home buyers or even p first time investors um it could be a bit challenging when it comes to financial circumstances especially in our current economy mm. what would you say is a very what strategy did you and your partner use at the time to save up enough to have and to reach your main goal which is having land Okay, we didn't save. Okay. Uh, yes, we didn't save. Mm -hmm. At that time, we just went, we took a loan. Yeah. Then we decided that as soon as I start working, we're going to be able to, to to pay up that loan. Yeah. And it's the same thing that we did. So this year, I got a job, I got a, a substitute post. Mm -hmm. So we took that whole salary and we and paid just... off the loan. Oh, so wow. it means now our house is paid up. Hey, so tick. Yeah. Hey, no, you you know exactly what you're doing. Yes, Yamut. yes. Because like, <laughs> for me, I just feel like, you know, uh, was there a plan? Like, did you and your partner sit down and say, this is what we're going to do? Was there a plan? And I think especially for uh, young people who are doing this together, who, you know, young partners who have just gotten married and are ready to, because in, an investment alone is a big thing, but mm. doing it with someone else is another big thing. Yes, of course, you have the support. But what was that like? Like, was there a plan? Ish. SD. There was no <laughs> plan. You see, when we got married, Tina, yeah. we had decided that we're going to go and rent. Okay. Uh -huh. So the parents said, no, like, we, we shouldn't go and rent because renting will, we will be wasting just, money yeah, if we yeah, rent. Yeah. So we sat down and decided that, okay, we might as well just go and buy land. Mm. So at least we had the money to buy to, the land. At the time, yeah. But the money for building was not there. Mm. Hence, we decided to take a loan yeah. and just pay the, the, the loan mm. off. Yes. And I think also what's, you know, listening to your story and how... Uh, you finally have this piece because I can see when you talk about having land that you it's yeah. an achievement yeah it it's is. an accomplishment it to is. have this piece of land and you know with everything that's going on in South Africa fighting for land whatever the case may be to finally have something that's yours is, is an amazing accomplishment and you said you recently just finished mm, yes, so finished. well done and congratulations on that on this note of because you're an author yes I'm sitting next to an author yes <laughs> <laughs> tell us about what inspired before you even tell us what the book is about mm. i would like to find out from you why 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 write a book why not just start a youtube channel or make an instagram reel about this thing why a book okay so this is what happened so um the more i started helping other people with mm. the with, with setting up their accounts and uh, and investing them, yeah. it got tiring mm. so me as a teacher, I needed to come up with an innovative way. <laughs> you see, when you have like so many classes, you can't be writing notes in yeah. all these classes. Yeah. So you need to compile. Maybe you must compile notes, make copies and give it to everyone. So it became tiring. So I decided to be innovative and just compile all the lessons that I've been giving uh, individuals. Ne? Then I must just... So I printed the, the, the so, thing out. Mm. Then I just started gave to everyone. Yeah. Yes. So that was an easier way for you to It was to an teach. easier way for me. Yes. And what is the book about? The book is about investing in shares, buying mm. shares on easy equities. Mm. Yes. And then how do you... How do you I mean... So how do you dive deep into these topics and the different lessons? Can you break up the book for us, like the different lessons? The different that are lessons. There? Okay. So with 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 investing, we cannot separate savings from investing. Mm. So number one, the book will teach you about saving the different types of saving. Mm. Maybe for example, um, I think there's a part where I wrote that. When it comes to investing, you need to sacrifice. Number right. one. So it means that if let's say. Let's say you every month you, you, you used to use 350 to do your hair. Yeah. But now you decided that um, let me just cut my hair. Yeah. So you are able now to have an extra 350. 350. Mm. So I, I, I advise you that you take that 350. Then you start investing with it. Mm. So I tell you that you don't need thousands and thousands for you to start investing. You mm. can just start investing with, uh, with whatever money that you have. Mm. Then, and, oh, besides savings, then it teaches you about um, easy equities, how mm. it works, how you can make money from buying shares, you get dividends, you get capital gains, mm. and so on. And I think that 
you know, a lot of the time we talk about certain lifestyle changes that we have to make in order to save. Mm. Like now you gave a perfect example, hair. Mm. You know, we don't always need to spend so much money on hair. Yes. What lifestyle changes did you make? Did you also cut your hair? I didn't cut my hair, but I bought a weave. <laughs> you know, this <laughs> but I had to buy a weave so that yeah. I won't, uh, I won't do, do hair my hair every, every month. Yeah. Yes. So, mm. uh, yo, there was a lot, Esti. Like, <laughs> we have time. <laughs> Buying clothes. Mm. I used to buy clothes like every month. Every yeah. month I used to buy clothes, but now ah, I no longer buy clothes. Right. Um, then oh, then we, we, we also had to sit down and decide that, okay, now me and my husband, each one of us must be able to save like 10% of our salary right. every month. Mm. Then we can be able to invest that money. Exactly. Then we sold our car. We had two mm. cars. Mm -hmm. Then we decided to sell one of our cars. So with that the the installment money we use yeah. that money to to fund in, our other our, our other businesses mm, now and keep investing and yes. this is how you will achieve what you mentioned in the beginning of the show generational wealth yes if you continue doing if you this. continue investing yes exactly you um you're a mentor you're an educator and you help people um obtain uh, and reach their goals when it comes to investing and creating general oh, general and creating generational wealth and financial freedom for themselves so my question to you is Mrs. Fish, what is the importance of educating other people to do exactly what you're doing? Okay, so you see with, with rich people, ne? Mm -hmm. um, I think we have that mentality of saying rich people, they don't share how they got, got where, where they, they are. are ne? So now I decided that now that I know of something that can help other people, let me go out there and start sharing this information. Yeah. So I started sharing the information with my, my with my family, then with my close friends. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important so that even other people, I think that the only way we can combat poverty is when we educate each other. Yeah. So if maybe someone teaches you a skill, that person is planting a seed. You need to go out there and start teaching other people as well so that the world can become a better mm. place. And, you know, because you're living proof of this this thing that, that's worked, you know, investing, uh, buying land. Mm. You've done it all. You even now, you know, livestock. Mm. You've yeah, got the land to continue with or to, to start farming. Um, and I think, yeah, my next question is how did taking your own advice and getting into the stream or the different streams of investment, how did that work for you? Okay, like I can say that um, what helped me is that I started by educating myself yeah. first. Ne? So now I don't invest in something that I don't understand. Right. If I don't understand it, no matter how enticing that particular investment mm. is, I don't, I don't invest in things that I don't understand. Mm. So I started by finding people who are doing the same thing that I want to do. I find them, then uh, maybe I follow them on YouTube, I subscribe mm. on their channels, I follow them on social media, just so that I can familiarize myself with all the challenges that come yes. with it, familiarize myself with all the terms that I use. So educating myself first is what helped me mm. to start whatever that I, I started. Mm. And it's so important to, you know, knowledge is power, I would yes. say this, and, and doing your own research mm -hmm. before even trying. Because, especially with the investments, because you could end up losing all yeah, that money. you can lose money. Hey? Yes. Have if you, you invest in what you like don't that? understand. No, no, but I've seen people, I've seen Oof. people, I've seen people mm. lose money because um, they don't take their time to learn about that skill. Yeah. They ra they, they'd rather pay someone thousands do yeah. to do it for them. Then it ends in tears. Then they lose all yes, their money. Then it ends in tears. And you know what's so important, especially, and I'm sure you talk about it in your book. Like you said, one of the most important things is savings. Save. How do we save, right? And I speak a lot about financial freedom and financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for us to, you know, being in the new year, starting off fresh. I want to know from you just before, yeah, before I even ask my question, what is your goal for 2022? 2022 i want to buy a house uh, okay yes <laughs> i just want to buy a you just want to buy yes, more I, property I, another yes, house i need to buy a house yeah. in 2022 mm -hmm. like that's my main goal for 2022 for 2020, to buy yes, property so i've started saving towards that goal okay you see that's a whole other conversation let's yeah. talk about that so for me right you've already started saving and you you, you educate people on saving mm. let me get to my initial question financial literacy 
a lot of us as South Africans were not taught this thing. Yeah, even right? at schools. Yes. Even at schools. We hope that our parents plant that seed into us, but in most cases, maybe they can't. Maybe they, we don't mm -hmm. have the privilege to be taught by parents. So from one woman to another, financial literacy, what is so important about it and what, the power of teaching it, how does that make you feel? Okay, let me start with the importance. Sure. You see, when we have money, mm -hmm. you will have options. You don't just settle for anything. So money gives you that voice. Money gives you that thing of saying, no, I don't want this. I want that. Yeah. So I'm sure, like, it's a good feeling to know that, okay, I can always opt for option A, not option B. Yeah. You see? Mm. So that is what uh, investing and savings uh, helps you with. You are able to choose whatever you want. If you decide today that, ah, it's raining outside, let me, <laughs> let, 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 maybe let me go to McDonald's yeah. and get uh, what, what. You should then, be able yes, to do that. Yes, you should be able to do that. So also, it's options. It's it's about options, having, yeah, these yes, options. Having different options. And my second part of the question was the importance of it, especially for, for young South Africans. It's very important because it teaches you to be responsible. Yeah. It teaches you to be intentional about where your money is going. Mm. So you don't just wake up and decide to do anything. You, you already have a plan. Yeah. You budget, you plan, then you execute. Mm. Because saving doesn't mean that you must live a miserable life. True. You can always have no enjoyment here and there, <laughs> yeah. but within mm. your means. Mm. And I think it's so important to set up boundaries for yourself, mm. you know, mm. because we're so quick to wanting to live a life that we see other people living. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you're the one that has to deal with the struggles and the trials and tribulations that mm. come with it. Mm. Mm. Um, you you said in your bio that, you know, financial literacy is, is what you do. It's what you preach. Mm. Mm. What were who taught you financial literacy? Let's start there. Hey, okay. hey where did that come from? So I have this other friend of mine. Uh, she's a doctor, Uasa, Lisa. So with Uasa, this is what happened. Uh, she started working, I think, in 2018. Mm -hmm. Then she didn't buy a car for like two years. Yeah. So I was interested to find out, Uri, how is she doing it? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I approached Uasa and asked, Uti, what is happening? Why, why aren't you buying a car? Why aren't you buying a house already? Yeah. So she referred me to a book that uh, she read back in Varsity, which is the richest man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. So that is where I learned most of the stuff, right. like saving 10% of your salary every month, buying land, uh, buying appreciating assets. Yeah. yeah, so besides the book, I also learned from one of my mentors, Percy Singo. Mm -hmm. uh, he teaches a lot about savings and investing. Yeah, yes. and obviously that's when you saw the importance of this thing. Yes. And you've seen that these strategies have worked for you. They've worked. Because you're literally, you know, real lived experiences is, is literally what I preach on the daily. And to learn from people who have gone through it. Yeah, very um, You know, and so Percy Singo, a guest who has been on the show before. Yes. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Percy, for this moment. Um, what is a, an important lesson that Percy's taught you? Live below your means. Hmm. You must be able to live below your means. No matter... Um, no matter how, how much you have, mm. you must be able to, to manage that money. You must be able to use that salary as your seed so that yeah. you can be able to fund your other dreams. So if you are working and you are living from hand to mouth, like you will never have savings, you will never, you will mm. never invest in anything. You will always be looking for people to sponsor you. Yeah. Like, I think um, sponsorship is very rare in, mm. in, in South Africa. So the only way you're going to be able to sponsor yourself is by using your salary to be able to exactly. sponsor your dreams. Um, I, I, I feel like that might even be the answer to my next question I'm about to ask you, which is your biggest financial secret. What has like kept you going? And of course, we, you know, along the road, there's mistakes, there's obstacles that are in the way. But you're still here sitting and you've written a book and you've made it, you know, you've, you've still got your investments going. So your biggest financial secret? I don't invest in what I don't understand. Right. I don't invest in what I don't understand. Mm. I take my time to educate myself mm. about whatever I want to invest in. So I think that's my biggest financial um, secret. secret yeah. Yes. And... I invest a lot, like yeah. almost like 80% of my salary goes, goes into towards investment. savings and yeah. investments. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. 
I mean, that's how you could pay off the bond so quickly. That, yes, that's and that's why we were able to pay off the loan. Exactly. And now that's done. That's behind you. So That's behind. So we are looking forward to Vision 2022. There you go. Vision 2022. Yes. So, and I like that you said that because I think a lot of us, what we do is we tend to jump uh, onto a lot of trains even though we don't know where it's going, mm, you know, mm. and that's how we make these mistakes. And um, so I just wanted to find out from you with regards to mistakes that you've made. I don't even want to know about the mistakes. I think the bigger question is the lessons that you've learned along the way. If there's something you could leave with, with our, our viewers tonight um, of maybe three important lessons that you've learned. With, it, with regards to investing. Yeah, and on your journey to, you know, purchasing land, investing. I think it, it goes back to the thing of saying they shouldn't invest in what they don't understand. Definitely. If they want to venture into a particular business, they must take their time. They must find people to mentor them. You don't have to pay a mentor for you to have a mentor. Yeah. You can, you can buy books. Yeah. You can go on YouTube. You can go on Instagram. Follow people who are doing what you want, want what you do. aspire mm. to, to be. Do mm. you understand? Mm. Then, um, they must be flexible. They must be flexible to say, okay, I'm only sacrificing for a little while. Yeah. Because when you are saving, we won't be saving for the rest of our lives. True. 30 years from now, I'll be reaping whatever that I planted in 2021 up to 30 years from yeah. now. So it doesn't mean that when we are, when, when we are, when we are saving, it doesn't mean that uh, we, we need to suffer. We, mm. we need to sacrifice so much. Yeah. But you just sacrifice where you can so that your money in the future, your money will be the, the, the one that is working for you. For you, yeah. Yes. Or your assets or your investments yes. are, are working for you. Yes. You know, you, you make money while you sleep. That is the goal, you know, making money while yes. you sleep. The fact that you started in university, I know there's a lot of students also who tune into the show. And, you know, I think I, the biggest thing is they're asking themselves, how do they start with the resources that they have? How do they just con start doing what you're doing? Oh, so I, I posted something on my WhatsApp uh, last night saying that if you are receiving NSFAS money, uh -huh. you can start by saving like 200 trends every month. Let's say your, your degree is a four-year degree. Yeah. So if you save 200 trends every month, at least by the end, by the time you, you finish your degree, maybe you're going to be having like 8,000 rands. Okay. So you'll be able to use that 8,000 rands to look for a job. If you are called for an interview, you then you're going to be able to use that 8,000 rands to go and attend that particular mm. interview. Mm. So it's all about uh, using the resources that you already have. We are not saying uh, save money that you don't have. We are saying we, with the money that you already have, yeah. you must take out a portion of that money and save it so that you're going to be able to uh, to fund your dreams exactly. or to start saving or to start investing. Exactly. On the show, we always talk about um, your five-year or your 10-year goal, right? And I know that you said in the new year you want to buy property. Is your plan to build a property portfolio with a whole lot of property investments? Um, is that where you see your investments going as well? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I think the goal is having three properties before 30. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. How long do we um, have? Like six years, <laughs> six years from now. Six years from yes. now. Yes, so I think three. it's possible. In fact, it's possible. I know it's possible. Definitely. So three properties before 30 mm. is the goal. I, I love how you said I know it's possible because mm. literally I feel like We've been filled with, especially from our guests, talking about manifestations and yes, just manifest. vision board. Vision very board. Important. Tell us about your vision board, Mrs. Spish. Okay. Is there a convertible on there? Is there a Mercedes? Is there... Was I it? also have it on my on my wallpaper. Oh, actually. really? Yes, okay. I have it. It's here. Oh, wow. Yes. So no. every time when I press my phone, I know that... That's what you see. Yes, that's what I see. Oh, wow. So my goals are just popping up every day when I wake up in the morning. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. When I open my phone. I'm and farming is a big it. one for you. Because yes. it's... Yeah. Because it's it's a new journey for you. Yes, it is. And so, so with so, regards to mentoring and, and getting into a whole new... That's a whole different property. Um, not even property. Investment strategy. Mm -hmm. Livestock farming. Mm -hmm. Right? And of course, yes, you've got the privilege and you've got yeah. the land. Mm -hmm. um, but what is what is that start of, of investing into livestock and farming? What has that been like for you? 
Okay, so my dad was a farmer, ne? Ah. So at home, like, we have a very huge land. Mm. So we used to have, like, in, in fact, we still have uh, cattle, we have goats, chickens, and we used to have pigs. Yeah. So um, I sat down, and uh, when I was reading the Bible, mm. I learned that most of the gifts that a, a, a person will have is connected to who gave birth to that person. Right. So, um... I I, 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 I I drew something and I was like, okay, so my dad was a farmer. My grandfather left us with a very huge land. land. And it means that there's something that can come out. Of course. So um, I was teaching uh, grade 12s. So I had extra money for, for the Saturday classes. Yeah. Then I started saving that money. Mm. I didn't want to save it myself. So I'd send that money to my mother every month and I told her, Uti, I want to start this thing and I know it's possible. Yeah. So when I please keep that money for me. So mm. that that's how everything started. Exactly. It started by saving. And already I think, you know, uh, you generational wealth was already designed for you. Mm. I you just so. had to follow in those I footsteps. Think so. You know what I mean? It was there for you, which is amazing. And I think that a lot of people, if we do have these resources, whether it's our fathers or grandfathers mm. that have left something for us, I think it's amazing that you're actually um, following through and, and mm. taking those opportunities. Because a lot of people, we don't. Mm. You know, we get things left to us and we're just like, we don't want to do yeah. this. We don't see the, the power in this. You, yes, you used to give some money to your mom yes. and then obviously she would uh, keep that for you so that you could reach your goals and achieve your goals when you needed that money. Now, a lot of us, we don't have, um, there, are, there are obviously many ways to save and you chose to do that method, mm. right? And some mm. of us have other other methods like putting the money under the mattress mm. or, you know, under the your underwear in the cupboard. You know, we all keep our stash in very weird places. Yes. Um, I can't even, you know what, for me... Right now, the best place is the bank. That's what I... I used to keep it in my cupboard. Mm. But it was just so hard. Let me tell you the story about mm. what, when I used to keep it in my cupboard. So, you know, this was back in at home in Cape Town. And I used to keep money under my cupboard and hope that... I, I would always tell myself, forget about it. Forget. Mm. Like, we all do that. Like, when you find a 200 rand in a pair of jeans and you're like, huh. Mm. You know, and that's what the feeling I, I wanted when I used to save my money in my cupboard. But that wouldn't work for me. Um, so, you know, as much as we all have our different methods, mm. why did you, uh, what would you say is the best, the best method uh, to save? Okay, for now, if you are, if you are a beginner, I, mm. I'd say you, you need to use your bank. Yeah. But you need to separate your, 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 your money. Um, now I use Capitec. Mm. So cap, when you go to your Capitec app, you press explore then uh, you're going to have uh, something that is written for savings plan. Yeah. So currently, I have savings for, for, for my mom's kitchen. I oh, have wow. tithes. I have yeah. uh, e-book sales, yeah. the e-book that I sell. Mm -hmm. Then I forgot the last one. So every time when someone buys the book, I just transfer the money straight, straight to the e-book e sales. Mm. Every time when I get paid, I transfer the money to... Uh, my mom's kitchen. Kitchen. Yes. Mm. So you can be able to to just uh, use your bank for now. Then the more you learn, the more you educate yourself, you'll see that okay, maybe the interest is too little. Then, then you can you find just a different way venture to save. into yeah. into the stock yeah. market. And I like that you said you break it up because they are we all saving for different things. So my, my question is, um, financially, if, you know, there is someone who is alone but wants to go on the journey that you've been on, how do they, with no support, how, how can they start making and going on that journey of investing? Okay, so I'm assuming that you are talking uh, about financial support. Yes. Okay, so number one, now I'm a teacher. Mm. But for me, it wasn't enough. The salary that I'm earning wasn't enough. So I had to find out... Um, the things that I'm good at. Yeah. So the first thing that you need to do is to find out what are you good at? Yeah. What are your gifts? What are your talents? Then you use those gifts and talents to be able to generate more money, mm. to, to, to create another income stream. Mm. So let's say you, let's say you are a singer or something. Yeah. Maybe you are a good MC. You can just, maybe your, 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 your friend is getting married. You can just, uh, offer your services then mm. then more people are going to see you then who knows maybe you will, you will start getting bookings but my sister, my friends don't want to pay me I offer myself all the time 
but it's the platform. People are seeing you there. And then they'll, yes, one then they'll day. be like, oh, where did you get that one? Then you start getting bookings. Yeah. So you need to find out your talents, your gifts, use those so that you can create more income streams. And now I use mine. I teach every day. Yeah. So that is what I use now. I teach people, mm. then I'm able to to make money mm. out of it. Mm. And that's, I think, the best piece of advice that I, that I'm, I want to take from the show is that, you know, if, yes, let's say, you know, a lot of students, we, we do our degree, we graduate, mm. and then we stay in this nine to five. And I think it's so important that we look outside of yes, that. Please. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please, guys. Uh, and find different opportunities. So mm. thank you, Mrs. Mm. Mesh, for, for joining us and for giving this amazing advice. And I, and I just hope that everyone who's watching actually takes and learns from this because I think it's absolutely amazing that you came and shared your experience with us. Yes, thank you. Esteem. Thank you so much. To our viewers at home, thank you so much for joining in. We are live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Take care and stay safe. Happy New Year.